It's the red button. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. I really do. But this is episode 35 of the Prime Podcast. I am your host, Coast, and that is your other host, Mr. Fats. Say good morning, good evening, and happy new year, Mr. Fats. Yo, (laughs) peace. You know, ladies and gentlemen, again, it's been a minute. We had an episode in the can, but that was scrapped. And we said, we can't give them that old bullshit. We got to give them that new, new, new year, new us. Word. Yeah, so what the fuck has been going on with you, man? Yo, just, you know, I just uh, finished up a little vacation. You know what I'm saying? What is a vacation? Were you skiing in Aspen? Nah. I was actually uh, just home, you know? Just farting on the couch in Amityville? Nah, not mm. really. Not really. Just hanging out with the family and, uh, you know, doing what we do. You know what I'm saying? What do we do? What do you do? Well, Tell the people what need happened to know. Was, what happened was oh, uh, Christmas Day, Christmas Day, uh, mm. <clears throat> as you know, I work, I work uh, afternoons. So Christmas Day, I took off Christmas Day, and then I had off that whole week between Christmas and New Year. And uh, basically, you know, just put a million, uh, put a gajillion toys together for my son, you know, and played with him and, you know, and did some housework around the house. And in the wee hours of the morning, I played with my wife and that was about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, when you say you played with your wife, yeah. could you go into detail on what, what was that? You well, played Parcheesi, Monopoly, what, PlayStation? Yes. Well, Something wholesome, I hope. Yes, it's a it, it's a, a a wholesome game that we play. You know what I mean. And uh, it's called Hide This. The cops are coming. Yes, it's called Who Hide This. The cops are coming. You know, and my wife will not be uh she will not be outdone by anyone. She will hide it the best. You know what I'm saying. And it's it's it's, it's always it's always a, a a great time. You know, we had we had family over on Christmas. Uh huh. Then we had like during the week we kept having like, like you know people, friends and family come over and everything else like that, and just you know catching up with a lot of people that I don't get to see because I'm always working. You know what I'm saying? That you are, sir. Always working. Yes. So, Hardest working man in New York City. Yeah. Well, I try. I try. You know what it is? Is that I wish that I had as much money as you. That I could sustain my oh. lifestyle with just eight hours a day, but see, I can't do that. I I have nothing. That's the thing about it. I have nothing. Oh my gosh! And um, uh, I just don't have anything. That's I wake up every day with nothing. Oh okay. Okay. And then um, I proceed throughout the rest of the day with nothing. Well, speaking of having nothing. Okay. Yes. December twenty fifth is a very festive uh, uh, time in in uh, in the human the human culture. I would say because mm-hmm. it's not just this country; it's it's uh, across the world. People right. celebrate this holiday we call Christmas. Christmas, right? That's what it is. And it's yeah. a time. It's a time of you know gift giving, if you will. It's a lot. It's gift giving. It's it's a very festive time. Amongst this COVID uh, situation, a lot of things have been, like, kind of strained because, you know, it's also a time where a lot of families get together. Uh, my wife, as we've discussed many times on this podcast, has Italian in-laws, you know? and um, Forget about it. And I, do I even have to tell you uh, about the, the incredible feast? And the incredible amount of people that go to this one household and, and it's just like eating and family and drinking and, you know, it's, it's like a, it's like a fat man's dream. You know what I'm saying? Um, yes, I do. It's a rather good time and it's, you wait all year for it. Yeah. And, and, and all, like, and you know. all, and all the stops are pulled out. I mean, there's dishes from everywhere. I'm telling you, there's nothing but food. 
you cannot put it this way. It was a custom because we used to go up there every year, and uh, you know, it was a, it was a waste of time to like get up and eat breakfast. That was a waste of time because you had to make space for the amount of food that you would encounter later on in the day. Yeah, well, that's because you're not, you know, you're not experienced. I eat breakfast, lunch, and then I eat seven dinners. Oh, okay. I sit at the table and I keep taking more plates of food until I can't possibly move anymore. It's 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 ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. I mean, the amount of courses that uh, you know, was this Christmas by the Eve time, or Christmas Day? Christmas Day, and by the time we get to the fruit, I'm tapping out. I'm, I can't. I just can't. No more. So, so did they did they do Christmas Eve and Christmas Day over there, or you guys just go Christmas Day? We just go Christmas Day. But they do the day before. That's the day for the fishes. Oh, the seven. Yeah, of course they do the day before. Uh, Italian uh, Christmas Eve is isn't it? Was the the feast of seven fishes, right? Yes, yeah, seven fishes, and uh, each one more delicious than the next than the last. Right. And I love Christmas Eve. I mean, when I was a child, young man, when my grandparents were still alive, right. and um, you know, when everybody was Italian, right? Um, back before my mother jumped ship and became Irish. <laughs> um, no, well, you know, when she when my grandparents died, and then she got married to Gary. Right. Gary is uh, he's Irish. It's some sort of hybrid mix of European white, I suppose. Yes. Yes. Um, but not Italian. Right. And then, you know, uh, once the grandparents are gone, she starts, you know, not doing Italian shit anymore. Right. So we weren't getting the same feast of fishes. And then when Amanda bought that house out east, Amanda was like, fuck all that bullshit. <laughs> we brought the fishes back. Right, right, right. So, you know, we were over there and she, my mother came in from Florida. She actually came. Right, and she helped the man to do the uh the the fishes, and I ate a lot of them, and then they swam out of my asshole and into the toilet bowl, and then I ate more the next day. Right, what kind of fishes? What what, what are we talking about here? You got all right. You start with the uh, you got shrimp, um, scampi. Okay, that's one. You got you got lobster. Two. You got. Um, scallops. Three. You got the clams. Um, linguine with clam sauce. Four. Then you got. Uh, it's like a sort of like a baked cod fish, like sort of like a fillet. Okay, five. All right. Then you have what else did we have there? Oh, uh, fried clams. Um, calamari. Okay. And you, one you, more you, order. you didn't say that like an Italian. Calamari. There you go. And one more that I can't fucking think of right now. It's gonna smack me in the fucking back of the head. But it it was it was um, something else. I can't remember. That's six. There's one more. I'm sure it's great. But uh, mm-hmm. but then also you have eggplant rollatini right chicken parmesan right penne alla vodka right you have um various different vegetables uh rice balls potato croquettes you got fucking just just now, the smorgas- did they cook did they cook all of this everything because no i've never had amanda's cooking but i know mike gets busy mike helps out but no, when my saying, mother's I'm, there. I'm, what I'm saying is I've never tasted your sister's cooking because every time I've 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 come over to you guys is in the summertime as a cookout thing and I know Mike gets busy. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, Mike does all right. I have the official menu right here, I found it. Okay. Let's go with the appetizers. Mozzarella tomato, uh-huh. antipas, uh-huh. shrimp cocktail platter, that might be seven, baked clams, fried calamari, linguine with clam sauce, lobster tails. Shrimp scampi, scallops, codfish. Yeah, so that that uh, cold shrimp is a fish. Eggplant rollatini, chicken palm, rice balls, potato croquettes, green beans, corn with rosemary, broccoli with breadcrumbs, uh, string beans, um, and then I know I'm 
I'm on to the next page that I didn't take the picture fully. Then there was desserts. There's all kinds of pies and cakes. And my wife alone baked rainbow cookies, chocolate chip cookies, these little round ones with the jelly in them. Uh, she made a cheesecake, the, the original Junior's cheesecake recipe from Brooklyn. Right. Oh, God. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, yeah. You did, you did that, and then what did you do Christmas Day? On Christmas Day, we went to Burns' house, uh-huh. and uh, she made prime rib. Oh, rib roast? She made a rib roast? Yeah. She, yeah. The prime, you know, the little prime rib steaks. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, cook yeah. the whole big one, and yeah, then yeah, you yeah. slice it. Mm-hmm. The rib roast, yeah. That, with all the sides and fixings, um, you know, the same fucking more cookies and cakes and, you know. Right. That was... I probably ate about 40,000 calories in two days. Oh, so, like, you had to surf one day, and then you had to turf the next day. Yeah. That's how you yeah. did it. Okay. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Okay. That's how you have to do it. You're obliged. You have no choice in the matter. Now, now that we got all of that out of the way, there was a controversy that you hit me with Christmas Day. Mm. Very controversial. Uh I did not believe you. My wife didn't believe you. Uh, we, 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 we chose to feel like you were exaggerating in some way, form, or fashion. But you claimed that your loving wife got you nothing for Christmas. I did not receive a gift on Christmas. No, not, not one single gift. I don't understand how that happened. Well, that's what happens when no one loves you, Mr. Fats. That's yeah, I, when when, when you are when I relayed that to my wife, my wife, knowing your wife, was like, That's impossible. Phil is absolutely lying on Danielle. I'm not lying. As sad and unbelievable as it may be, uh huh. I'm not lying. And the thing about it is it's just uh, she uh she doesn't care. About, like, even though I got her a present, right. she doesn't put the same, like, she doesn't feel like it's as important. Right. Not that it's super important. I mean, I'm 39 years old. I've I've gotten presents in my life. But it's nice, you know? Somebody right. thinks about you, they're like, ah, I thought you would like this. Right. Now, you know, that's all. So, we had, like, a, it's, it, it's, everybody thinks it's funny. My wife was was uh, asking for a bike. She wanted a bike so bad, right? I like bikes, she, yeah. She wanted a bike. She wanted a bike. And I was telling you that uh, <clears throat> it was very hard to find a bike. For, mm. some, for some reason, everybody was buying them. I guess in the pandemic, people couldn't go to gyms. They were just buying up the bikes. So all of the big box stores didn't have bikes. We're talking about Target, Walmart, Dick's, all of these sporting places, nobody had bikes. You remember a couple of episodes back, I don't know if they're avid followers of us, you and I spoke about bikes and you were giving me the rundown of what's the difference between these big box stores and what they do and then when you go to and buy better stuff and everything else like that, right? Sure. Okay. So, I located a a bike. Now, mind you, my, my wife had already... Uh, from Amazon, she had bought this attachment. It's like uh, this thing, you know, you hook it onto the back of the bike and my son can, like, ride on the back with her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, so she bought one of those and it's white. So she bought it. It's in the, it, it's been sitting in a box in the garage, right? So I located this bike, this 26-inch uh, uh, women's mountain bike. It's white, got, like, pink in it, whatever. So I I located it. I bought it. You know, they give you a a set amount of time where you can pick it up. So I timed it straight to be able to pick it up Christmas Eve because I had nowhere to store it in the house without her seeing it, right? Mm. So, you know, because for some odd reason, I could have probably put it in the shed, but I didn't want to put it in the shed. So I was like, ah, I'll just pick it up that night and then... When I come in, because obviously I come in so late, everybody's sleeping. I could just put it in the house, put it by the tree, boom, bow, done. Anyhow, my my mother is here, and Christmas morning, my 
my son and my mother come into my bedroom. I'm knocked out. I've been wrapping presents all the way into like seven o'clock in the morning. It's like nine now. I'm just like, you know, I'm just barely getting into a good sleep, but now they want to wake me up. So anyway, I'm half sleep. I'm, but I'm sleeping. I'm enough awake that I can decipher what they're saying. And at first I hear my son, oh, daddy bought you a cruiser. So my wife doesn't know like what she's, I guess she's like surmising a little bit. But then here comes my mother. My good old mom, my loving mother, right? She comes in, oh, that's such a nice bike that you guys brought mad. And then, <laughs> oh my, yo, I'm telling you, I was right there for the surprise. This is the only thing that she wanted. And she kept like saying that she wanted. So obviously I went out of my way to go get this. I'm right there to where she can come out of the room and be surprised and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God. I hear my mother like, what? I open my eyes. My wife has this grin from ear to ear. And she goes, thanks, babe. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Don't touch me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the the yeah. cover was blown. Do you know how hard I worked to for this surprise to come off, man? I would have took my mother back home. Like, you gotta go. <laughs> I started yelling, get out of my room. Just go. She's like, what? Why are you kicking me out? Just go. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. You didn't even tell your mom that you were doing this? That's your. This is where this started. Yeah, yeah. See, well, you know what it is. I tried to orchestrate it in a way that everyone would probably be getting up at the same time because I know how my family and my household works. So I was like, all right, cool. Everybody will be converging at the same time. But I, what I should have done is just told her, if you see something, don't say anything, right? That's right. But anyway. Now shut. But anyway, <laughs> uh, everyone in my household including my mother, got something that, like, totally just had them, like, you know, because I, I try to pay attention to what people want, like, the, the thing that they want the most. And then I try to go out of my way to go get that. Not just showering with a whole bunch of different gifts, but basically the thing that makes your heart sing. Like, I got a 17-year-old. All she ever wanted was a pair of AirPods. I didn't want to get her AirPods because... I didn't think she was more responsible enough for AirPods, right? So I tried to right. hold her off as much as I possibly could, and I got her some AirPods. She got a, a few other things, but all of that per- paled in comparison. Now, since, what has it been? What is it now? The 5th of, of, of January? That's right. What January we, 5th. Well, well, Christmas was what? 10 days ago? 15 days? No, 10, 14 days ago. All right, fourteen something like days, that. something like that. You know what I mean? Anyway, All right. and this girl has not walked around. She's not had these things. I was like, "Yo, you know, you should take them out and clean them and clean your ears." You know what I'm saying? Like seriously, <laughs> you what know are you what saying? Mean? She's been rocking them all the time. All the time. You can't even see her without them in her ears. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what it's all about, baby. Fuck, you're going to have AirPods and keep them in your pocket. So here's the thing. That's why when we heard about your situation, we were flabbergasted. Well, this is, I mean, this is the situation. What do you buy? The man who has everything. Uh, I, is what she, that was, she was uh, like, I don't know. I, and leading, this is the other thing. Leading right. up to Christmas, uh-huh. I had bought myself. Two pairs of Jordans. Right. I thought you would I thought you finished with those though, man. I thought I mean, so did I, but when certain ones drop, I still buy them. Okay. But I, I, uh, I'm 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 surprised because I thought that that was a phase that was over. You know? Well, I what am I gonna walk around with newspaper on my feet? No, I'm just saying I I thought that that was like a thing of the past. I guess it's not, you know. Nah, like I, for instance, like you remember the the all black fours that the fucking contractors put sawdust all yes, over. Yes, yes. I've those are the shoes I rock every day, and that was almost a year ago by now. Right, right. Absolutely. So when I wear the dog shit out of those, then I pull out the next pair. 
I, you know, I just, I want, they don't always have the ones I want. So when the ones I want drop, I buy them and put them in the closet. And what did you get? I, I, Which ones did you get? Uh, fire red fours. They're not, they're not red. They're white and red. Okay. They're the same. They're fours, but they have the Nike Air on the back. The actual colorway that he wore in 89. Okay. White, red, black. Right. I buy all the classics. And, um... The Ju- they're called Jubilees. They're 11s. They came out. They're like kind of special edition 25th anniversary. Okay. So, and that's it. Then I bought a Kobe jersey. Then I bought a Lawrence Taylor Super Bowl jersey that I forgot I wanted to wear on here to give you nightmares. No, well, uh, I, and I, I happen to have my Buffalo Bills jersey on right now. And oh, my Buffalo Bills know. hat. And I'm drinking out of my Buffalo Bills mug because uh, we're awesome. At this time, yeah, I give it to you. Bills look great. We're 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 totally uh, destroying everything in our path, and yeah, so you know that that could have been good. I mean, listen, a lot of times, and I get it. Until the Bills win the Super Bowl, the the first thing that people will talk about is you went to four, you lost all four, blah blah blah, this that and the third. But in between that powerhouse team that went to four Super Bowls and this team that's playing now, playing mighty well, it's been nothing but heartache in between. And it's that's been right. nothing but ridicule. And every time I would tell somebody I'm a Bills fan, they're like, why? You even said one time, said no one ever, that they're a Bills fan and everything <laughs> else like that. But, you know, I'm just enjoying, even though this is a, a peculiar time, because it's a time where... Fans can't really be in the stands to enjoy and to lend their energy to the teams and everything else like that. They're doing good, and I appreciate it. And it happens to coincide with bringing some kind of normalcy to to what's going on amid this uh, pandemic. Because I guess people thought that on January 1st, this thing was just going to magically disappear. And oh, God. People thought that about, like, everything that's wrong with the year. Mm-hmm. The Trump shit, the fucking, uh, the economy, the money, the jobs, everything. It's just going to be back to normal. Yeah, I mean, you know, to, to to be honest with you, man, it's so crazy because, you know, uh, it's it. I, I was saying this to someone and I said, uh, even when things, quote unquote, when there's more people vaccinated and and things are supposed to be opening up and everything else like that. This whole mask thing is a way of life. Uh, my wife and I, we just recently uh, acquired a new car, uh, and and I and I, I, you, you know about that. And we nice were, to have money, huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we we, you know, we bring the car home and everything else like that. And I was like, you know, I can see car manufacturers now putting boxes in the cars that are meant to like disperse ma- like dispense masks or keep masks clean or something like that. I can see that because if you look in any and everyone's car, there's masks hanging from the shift uh, from the shift not the shift levers from the the turn signal levers and everything else like that. Some people have masks hanging from the rear view mirror because that's just the new way of life. So now I can see automakers, you know, going into that. Manufacturers doing that. Having something to do with masks in the car. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, that's the that's, that's the new way of things. You know what I mean? I mean, you could just you could just keep the same crusty ass mask on the passenger seat and throw it on there. Yeah. Right over your mouth. But why would you, you want but why but why would you want to do that? Why would you want to reinfect yourself? Dude, I seen a lady today at Dunkin' Donuts this morning. Uh-huh. It it looked like she used this fucking mask to wipe her asshole. <laughs> it was fucking it was the most tattered piece of shit uh-huh. I've ever seen in my life. I'd hate to see her brazier. She was like 70 years old. She it wasn't even on her fucking face. It was like in between her nose and mouth, like bunched up on like her top lip and her lower nose. It was, it was a it was it a was it a, a a disposable mask? Yeah, it's like the, the standard issue surgical mask. Oh. But it was like coming apart. Like it wasn't even 
a cloth one. It was the kind you could throw out, like single use joint. Mm-hmm. And it, I just felt bad for her, but you know, she was being a good sport. I guess she was trying to be a member of society that takes health seriously right. for others and herself. I don't know. It's just this whole thing is getting a little fucking. It's getting a little ridiculous for me. Well, I all in the town by me, um, you know, all up, all up uh, in like the the village. You seeing like businesses are folding left and oh, right. Fuck. You know what I mean? Why does my phone keep beeping? Businesses are are going under. Yeah, they fold for real. Left, for real, folding left and right. And now, here's the other thing: you're now gonna see this like large, large glut of available uh, commercial properties now, because there's there's big stores, little stores, restaurants, everything are going under. You know what I'm saying? They just can't. You know. There's certain places that are still doing okay, I guess. I mean, like, the diners by me are doing okay, I guess. But, like, even the chain restaurants, they're suffering right now. These, like, Dude, you know? we, we, we drove on Hempstead Turnpike from my house to Levittown, and I saw two 7-Elevens go out of business. Like, That's how does that crazy. even happen, 7-Eleven? That's, That's crazy. And not even in, like, shit town. It was, like... One was in East Meadow, and one was right when you get into Levittown. I was just I was just in East Meadow in a, on Hempstead Turnpike. I went over to the Walmart over there. You know what I mean? I was I just drove past there. <laughs> yeah. I uh, we had to go to Target, Target, uh-huh. and pick up a fucking Dirt Devil handheld rechargeable vacuum right. to leave in my wife's car because when I cleaned this other car out, dude. Oh, because I had to prepare the lease to bring it back. Mm-hmm. This shit had probably, I'd say, approximately eight hundred cake pops. The remnants of right. But it the, was fucked up. His, his, this is my thing, you know, because when we when we uh, you know, I I explained to you the reaming that I took on on this on the lease that we took back, right? But you know, it was what it was, man. But. When we, I didn't even, I didn't wash the car. I didn't clean the car. I just took all our stuff out. And this kid, like, destroyed the back of that car. You know what I mean? And the thing about it is, you have him, and then you have the 17-year-old that uses the pouch in the back of the driver's seat as, like, her own personal garbage can. You're like, yo, what is going on with you? That's for, like, magazines and stuff. You know what I'm saying? What are you doing? And you just left it like that? No, I cleaned it out. That's what I'm saying. What I mean is I didn't like wash the car and vacuum it out and do all that. You know. I did. I feel I have like this I uh, I removed all the debris out of the car. But Dude, even after that, I removed all the debris, took it to a car wash, and it still looked like a moderately dirty car. Right. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like he, he you know, I was talking to my wife and I was like, listen. I want to keep this looking new at least for like a year and a half, please. You just got to stay on top of it. But you know what it is. Every time. You you know what it is, is the fact that, to be honest, man, like kids, they don't understand. Let's not eat in the new car. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I want it now. And then they want to cry and you want to, you know. Nah, see that kind of shit. I mean, I want to say we're not doing that, but. I turned around on the way to fucking Target today, and uh-huh. Sienna had a uh, a Ferraro Rocher ball in a fucking hand. You know what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half melted. Now the 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 guts on this fucking car are cream colored. Oh my god! But she, <laughs> she can't. You can't. I mean, her. Uh, the first thing my wife did after she saw what the shit looked like under the car seat of the last car is go on bye bye baby. And buy, uh, they sell a a thing you put over the seat where the baby seat is. Yo, and, and it catches got, shit. We, yeah, we got that. We got that. Listen, listen, listen. I just went to Target today, but I didn't go to the one you went to. I went to the one right there in Copec by me, right? Hmm. Yo, I went and I had to go get another booster seat, right? Because he had he had his old seat. If you saw the condition of the seat that we took out, I was like, there's no way. That I'm putting this seat in this new car. No way. So now, <laughs> I, I was like, I'll forego whatever the price is 
go get this new one. And we put the, 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 it's like that catch thing. You put it over the seat and you put the seat on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but, but the, the, that's, and we got black leather. So, it, you know, it's a little bit better, but still, man, it's like, come on, man. You got it. That's why I, I'm just, br- I'm sitting there brainstorming all night. I'm like, how am I going to keep this thing nice? And I just bought the little dirt devil to keep in that little trunk box. Right, right. And every time after I'll take her out, I'll see what's going on back there once right. a week. Right. Fucking, you know, hit it with the fucking vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. But that shit is, I don't know. This, uh, I, it was the fucking disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. Well, see, Gross. I get, again, this time I don't anticipate it getting as bad as it did on that car because. Remember when we got the, the one that we took back when when I bought that one. Um, that was the only car she was driving. Is that one was leather or cloth inside? It was cloth. It was cloth. That was that was the other mistake we made with the other yeah, one. That was yeah, cloth. It was cloth. But never this one, again. This one's leather. So, but what happened was, uh, the one we took back, that was her everyday car for yeah. a while until I bought the third car. So now that I got the third car, it's like that one stays parked until it's the weekend warrior. So it's not taking the brunt of the mileage a and the the exposure to the uh the the animal house that I call my family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it is what it is, man. It's it. it what are you gonna do, man? You gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? You want to ride around the style sometimes. You work hard. You want to have something nice. You want to have little, you know, no huss, no fuss. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I was I was leaning on my wife hard not to na- uh, to lease another car. Right. And we went completely in the opposite direction of that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Maybe next time. Well, I mean that 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 um the car that she got is. It's a real sick car, man. You know, did you get the deal that you actually wanted from before, or did you get something else? Mm, no, that deal doesn't exist. It doesn't. It's impossible. <laughs> that deal is a unicorn. <laughs> it's uh, that deal is for a base base model, right? Okay. okay, they maybe throw fucking ten of them out there, <laughs> right? And you know, the the once you get into like. There's different options in wheels. There's different options in paint. There's different options in interior. All right. Once you, you like, and then they just randomly put these combinations together and but that's you how, can't that's get. exactly how they get you to not get that base base model because now once they start putting options on it, it's like, well, that's not the price of the car. This is this. Right. It has to have an MSRP of exactly right. bing, bong, boom. Right. That doesn't exist. Unless you order it from the fucking factory, and by that time that deal is over, I don't know. But she's happy. She likes it. And seeing as how I'm her chauffeur, I basically drive it more than she does. So yeah, well, I mean, it's, you drove you drove the last car more than she did. You know what I mean? Everywhere we go, someplace, and we we had this conversation. Also, right. Um, if we go to my sister's house, who right. lives an hour away in each direction. Right. Sometimes I'll be there and I'll just fucking, I don't feel like driving home at midnight, an hour. And I'm like, you drive. And she's like, no, I'm not driving. I don't drive. I, I'm the woman. You drive. Yeah. What is yeah, that? I mean, I, listen, I, I hear that all the time. You know? Because do sometimes you just, don't you ever feel like, man, I just don't feel like driving. I'm tired. Well, see, here's the thing. This is what I do. This is my thing. I'll catch eye contact with my wife from across the room with a very stiff drink, and I'll show her (laughs) I am on my way to the bag. So you, ma'am, will have to drive us home. (laughs) This is the problem with that. And and, um, many occasions, my wife has seen me drink an entire bottle of vodka. Right. And just be fine. Like I don't, I don't. Nobody's ever seen me shit faced before. Right. I, I get sleepy. I, I haven't. No, I don't. I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't. I'm not like I. <laughs> in my DNA, it came up that I was part like Nordic Viking. 
<laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Did you, did I don't you, know. Did you do that ancestry thing? I did do it, yeah. And what was a hundred bucks, right? Uh, no, it was cheaper than that at the time. It was like I think it was sixty nine ninety nine or some oh, shit. Yeah, because my yeah. wife and I, my wife and I were thinking about taking that thing, just to see, you know, what's going on. It's interesting, especially for Italian. Like, um, my shit came up like mostly southern Italy. But that gets broken down into like Sicily. It's is, is its own thing, right. and most of my my DNA ancestry is from Sicily, and that has everything in it. It's like you got fucking uh, made up from North Africa, Saudi right. Arabia, right. Uh, Arabia, Iraq, right. Iran, right. all that shit. Right. So it shows you like the percentage of all that. It's it's wild okay. to to see. Oh, you don't have anything. You don't have anything on the boot. Just in Sicily. No, I have some Northern Italy shit too. Oh yeah, but the the majority of my DNA is is Southern. Okay. Well, see, here's the thing. You know, I want to I want to check it out. I want to see what's going on and everything else like that. And I looked into it. I thought it was like a hundred bucks or whatever. Um, <clears throat> getting back to the original point that we were saying, that's 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 my that's my uh, my um, my strategy every time. You know, it doesn't work people. for me. She fun, she just fun. she'll she'll tell me no. <laughs> wow. And then I can't drink. Wow. Across the room. Be like, Don't. Hey, see this nice drink I got? Oh, you see these two beers that I'm that I'm double fisting right now? Yeah, you know where I'm going, honey. <laughs> well you you have to like in order for this to be successful, I would literally have to just keep drinking and drinking. And I don't enjoy drinking that much. No, it, no, does, no. it doesn't really no, fucking no. do anything. That's what me. I'm saying. I'm not a lush or an alky, but that's just my way of, you know, getting out of driving back to where, especially if we like somewhere far, you know, it's not, it's yeah. not fun. It's not fun driving back. And see, here's the thing with my family. I don't know about yours. 17 minutes into the drive, the entire car is sleeping. Every. Oh day. yeah. Well, my daughter's always sleeping. It depends. If it's nighttime, then then she's sleeping. My wife goes to sleep. Right. My son sometimes will fall asleep. Yeah. But Everyone's and then I'm up talking right. to myself like right. a dick. Right. And then the thing about it is like, oh well, you can't like blast music because then it yes, will you can. That's yeah. where you go wrong. Now, how is it that you blast music when everybody's sleeping? How do you do that? I didn't tell you to go to sleep. We're in the car. Either I'm going to fall asleep too, <laughs> or I'm going to keep myself up. Right, right. So right. it's on you. Right. You're going to have to allow this to happen. Well. You can't always get what you want, Fats. Uh, I, you can I'm try telling, sometime. I'm just, telling, I'm just telling you. 17 minutes, if that, into the trip, everyone is sleeping. The whole entire family sleeping. My, uh, my, I know. My Trust son, me. My son's head... Looks like there's like a magnet in his knees that is drawing his <laughs> head to his knees. You know what I'm saying? You ever just look at him and be like, how? How are you comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dude. I'm telling you. Uh, I don't, and the other seat, in the other car was faced where her, Sienna was looking backwards. Right, right. And it was sort of leaned back. And I'd go look back there, and her head would still be down in the knees. Like, what? You went out of your way to do this? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Yo, and then you know, my daughter, she's she's got her head tilted back. You know, flies all you know rummaging around her her, her mouth. My wife is like, <laughs> my wife looks like she's about to overdose on something. She OD'd on something. This is crazy. And you're looking around, and you're like, yo, really? No one cares. To stay up and have a conversation with me to stimulate me to help me get us home safely. You know? That's where it's good. You call Sean. He's, he'll, he'll be like, what's up, you fat bastard? And then he'd call you fat for a half hour. Yeah, yeah. I've done that before. I just call Sean or my cousin while I'm right. driving and everyone's right. sleeping in the car. Right. And they'll, they'll talk me through it. And you know, the funny part is, what I like to do is I like to... uh this is what well, this will wake my wife up. The kids will not wake up, but this will wake my wife up. I'll just like lower the windows halfway. And- yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta pull one down in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put the windows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's my so, favorite shit when people start pissing me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, drop the windows and all of that thunder from the road. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, listen, man. Yeah. You got to do it. You know what I mean? Listen, it was getting a little hot in here. I had to let some of the steam out of the car, you know? Yeah, right. so... I I we got I got to shout out uh, our man on the streets, Big Chief Smash. He came to the island, and then uh, we linked up and grabbed some food. We was chilling, me, him, and Daniel. Nice, nice. MC Daniel. Nice. And he uh he wouldn't allow me to pay for the check. He even hooked the fat man up with food. Nice. So he's oh. earned himself forever a place in my heart. Shout out to Jay, man. That's my people's right there. There was some disturbing. News today. Disturbing. What happened? They they chose not to prosecute to bring charges against the officers in the Jacob Blake case. Huh? Why? I I I didn't actually read the whole article. I heard well, it. Well, then you're not I, allowed to talk about I, it. I heard about it while I was on while I was driving home from uh, the Walmart. Hmm. Listen, man, let me tell you something about Walmart and Target. This is what you need to tell MC Daniel. And then we'll get back to this Jacob Blake thing. <clears throat> what you need to tell MC Daniel is, we got my son a, uh, what do they call this thing? It's one of these uh, stuffed animal companies. I, I don't even know the, the, the actual name of it. But my son fell in love. He loves dinosaurs and dragons. That's his thing. He never met a okay. dinosaur he didn't like. Loves dragons, dinosaur. He's right now, if he was up, he has dragon pajamas on. So anyway, uh, we got him this dragon that he fell in love with in Walmart. And Walmart had this dragon for $7.99, whereas Target had the same dragon for $19.99. Wow. I would. I always tell people that I don't understand what it is, but I've always found things in Walmart way cheaper than you don't. You don't the, know what it is. The Target. What is it? Would you tell me? It's the yeah. It's the volume of sales. Walmart in New York. It's popping outside of New York. Walmart is everything. Right. So they do. A bigger volume of sales than right. Target, right? So they could afford to fucking yeah, man. Charge it's less crazy. money. It's crazy. It's 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 ridiculous. It's like wow, you know. So, uh, this Jacob Blake thing. Uh, Wait, it, what does Jacob Blake have to do with Walmart? I was telling oh. you that I was <laughs> driving home oh, from okay. the Walmart, and we heard on the news that they would uh, that they are declining to bring charges against the officers in the case. And, uh, you know, I, it's, it's kind of disheartening, uh, for that. And I guess what I was seeing, what, what I was seeing was they were saying something about, they're not going to bring charges against the officer or him. So it's like a, uh, it's like a wash. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, this shit like this happens all the fucking time. And I blame the media for hyping shit up and getting people all fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, it gets to a point where these cases get so big that, like, judges don't want to be on either side of it. They don't want to make a big fucking media spectacle of their friends. You know what I mean? The law enforcement, right. the, the friends they have higher ups. It, right. It's fucked up. Yeah, well, it it just it, to me personally, and I again with the details of the case and everything, because I know people are gonna say, "Oh, but he had a knife and he had this and it." The fact of the matter is, you know, he was fleeing and he was shot in his back. You know what I'm saying? And that to me yeah. is crossing. It, to me personally. This is my personal opinion. Anybody can have opinions that vary from mine, but my personal opinion is when you shoot someone in the back, you're crossing the line. That person is not an imminent threat to you. Our law enforcement agents 
are supposed to be armed because they run to the threat, whereas you and I would run away from it. So, of course, I advocate for law enforcement agents to be armed. But when you are not in any immediate imminent threat and a person is fleeing and you discharge your weapon, to me, that's criminal. Period. End of story. Yeah. No, nah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. You know. So. Uh, but, you know. And, and of it, course, like it, I said, people will, people will argue the semantics of, oh, he was this. He, his criminal record was this. He had a weapon. He had this. And people will, will, will say that. But like I said, once the, it, the person is fleeing, it's, it, 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 it changes. The dynamic changes. And that's in my opinion. So, you know, no, I, I agree with what you're saying. I don't know. I think that a lot of that shit I'm saying with the media, though, it's like there's so much stuff we don't know. They tell us what. Of course. Of course. And the thing about it is, is that, you know, it, 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 the thing most media outlets are enamored with being first and not enamored with being right. No one cares the, about being right. Everybody you, just wants uh, to be first. There's um. There's this shit on Netflix right now about uh, the Olympic bomber and fucking it's basically that that's the story. Like the they they made all this bullshit up about this guy that was supposed to be the um, he was like a security guard that wanted to be a cop, but he was sort of like a loser. Right. And they they tried to pin the whole shit on him. Right. That he was the one that was behind it. That he did it. Yeah. And they created this whole fucking trial by media. That he he was guilty. They ruined his fucking life. He couldn't get a job. He lived with his fucking mom, and he was like forty, and, and he he couldn't get a, a, a career. He he just wanted to have a career in law enforcement, right? And he he was sort of like some you know like little fat nerdy dude, like. Right. And then this shit happened, and they pinned it on him, and it turned out to be this other dude who went on to blow up fucking mad different, um, you know the the women's clinics. Was it like the Planned Parenthood yeah, and abortion clinics? A, yeah. Right, a few other places like that, and then they caught up with that dude, and they needed to be able to pin the fucking the the Olympic bombing on him, but they didn't want to do it because the media had already told the entire world that this dude was the guy. And they couldn't recant their statement and say that we they got had it wrong. to at the end, but like it was because of the FBI agent that was involved. He ended up fucking. He was like, "Fine, then I don't work here no more." He did the right thing wow. because they even convinced him. That it was this dude. And once he started doing this investigation, he's like, it wasn't him. You know? It's a good series on Netflix. It's called, uh, I think it's called Mindhunt. It came out uh, this year or in 2020. Yes, I'm going to have to but, check that out. Because the last time you uh, steered me to a series on Netflix, that was the glorious, illustrious Tiger King miniseries. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, this one is good. This one is, like, uh, better than Tiger King. Tiger King is different vibes. Yeah, well, you know, you know which which other which other one that was really good that you put me on to the 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 McDonald's one, that was crazy. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I liked it too. Yeah, so, uh, so, uh, back to I just wanted to segue back into the whole uh, Christmas thing. Uh, a few days later, you you showed up with like a a baldy. What was that all about? I showed up with a baldy. Hold on a second. The whole time we're talking here, I'm getting a link for Girl Scout cookies. And I'm trying to tell my wife. She, I tried to order them. And I'm trying to tell her that she needs to order me them. And I don't want to miss this opportunity. What What is your uh, your Girl Scout cookie of choice? S- uh, Samoas. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Samoas. Everyone loves Samoas. I don't know one person that doesn't like Samoas. Two. I need two boxes of Samoas. Two boxes. I like Tagalongs. Tagalongs is my thing. That's the peanut butter one, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Samoas and Tagalongs. That's my that's my guys right there. And two s'mores. The s'mores are the joint too. S'more. I I I think my family likes those. I I'm I'm more Samoas and and Tagalongs. The Tagalongs are real good. I, I could body and sleeve and tag alongs in no time. You know what I mean? Oh, boy. This just in. Dr. Dre suffers brain aneurysm and is in ICU in L.A. Wow. 
uh, Dr. Beats Dr. Dre or um, Yo MTV Dr. Dre? No, Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre is at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles after suffering a brain aneurysm. Wow. Sources connected to Dr. Dre and with direct knowledge tell us Dre suffered the aneurysm Monday and was rushed by ambulance to Cedar sinai and was taken directly to ICU where he remains on Tuesday. Oh, boy. Our sources say the 55-year-old music mogul is stable and lucid, but doctors don't know what caused the bleeding, and they are doing a battery of tests. As you know, Dre is in the middle of a very contentious divorce with his estranged wife, Nicole. Mm-hmm. As we report, Nicole wants $2 million a month. They don't know what the fuck cost his aneurysm? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, the man's a billionaire. It, $2 million a month is worth I don't give a fuck how much money piss, you got. piss, man. That's nothing. The guy's a nah. billionaire. So obviously putting him under some pressure, bro. Listen, um, listen, listen. Do you know what a billion dollars is? Yeah. What? Do you know what two million dollars is? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that shit hurts. <laughs> Fucking kidding me? Well, here's my thing. That's why you have to sign a prenup. You have to sign a prenup. Basically, yo, what's yours is yours. What's mine is mine. Whatever we make in between, we'll just, we'll divvy that up. But that's that. Jesus nope. Christ. Yeah. If you I, had well, Dr. My... Dre's money, if you had Dr. Dre's money, right? And his fame, his fortune, and everything else like that, would you just, would you have just got married like that without something in place to protect yourself? Absolutely not. That's, that's what I'm saying. You have to, I... it, it has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with not loving a person. It's just basically like, listen, I already came into this as some, as, as, something big you can't because i don't know what the person's motive is a person could you know people can can make you feel like oh yeah this is unless this is the person that was there from at the inception of you making a whole lot of money listen we got stuck around yeah you fucking running through hundreds of thousands of new pussies yes that person (laughs) is deserving of every dime that is coming to them but a person that you met once you're already at the mountaintop, nah, man, I gotta. You don't get to touch this. Whatever happens from this day forward, then we can talk about that. But this, what I have, you're not entitled to that. Yeah, well, I, I don't know, man. I guess it's a, it's a developing story. But um, you asked me a question about the head. You said you wanted to. Well, give me some. What was it? What. I saw that right after. <laughs> shut the hell up, man! I saw that after this whole debacle with the uh, with the with the the no gift, <clears throat> you you shaved your head in like protest. <clears throat> no, I didn't shave it in protest. So a few days later, um, we went to obviously many of the listeners know my wife and sister have a hair salon, and we went to. The place where they they get the stuff from, mm-hmm. They're like uh, what's that place called? The Supply Hair yeah. Salon Supply. Yeah. And she was like, pri- previously before Christmas, like I cut my own hair all the time. Like I said, when well, next time you go to that place, get me um, an Andis Fade Master. It's like the best buzz you could use. It's what the barbers use because they have all that shit over there. So <clears throat> she bought me. It's better. That, it's better than. It's better than the wall. Yeah, and the the, the fade, wall makes it has like a top notch one too. But every barber I've ever been to uses the Andis Fade Master. Right, right. Okay. And also, she bought me the Andis Bald Shaver. It's like the two coil joint. Mm-hmm. So, I I went in the bathroom to cut my hair. She she bought it for me over there, and she wrapped it, and she was like, "Merry Christmas!" And that's nice. It's great. I like that gift. It, I you know, mm-hmm. but it would be nice if it was under the tree on Christmas morning. But so, um, so I cut my hair and I just said, fuck it. I shaved the whole shit. And then I took the fucking, the, the balled out fucking buzzer and I went over my whole head and I just had a shiny joint and I went into the kitchen and many of the people listening saw the video I posted and she was like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like I look, I look fucking ridiculous. Right. Right. I, I. I usually like to keep some hair on my you head. You got the cordless joint or you got the, the, the regular joint? No, my shit, the, the 
Buzzer has a cord. The other one is cordless. The Fade Master has a cord. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. <clears throat> Cause the, the they have a cordless one. That joint that joint is uh is wow money. But uh Yeah, it's like what is it like four hundred dollars or something, right? No, nah, two twenty nine. It's not that bad. For the cordless one? The cordless one, yeah. Yeah, this one was almost that much too. What it was like two twenty nine? No, no, it was like up, upper hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but you know. Um but it was nice. But I just I felt like shaving my whole shit off. Started new for the twenty twenty one. I already have hair on my head. This shit came back that fast. Yeah. Well, I mean that you when I saw it, I was like, yo, this guy is like out of control, man. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, also another reason I wanted to see like my mother and the way I had my hair, you see the way I comb my hair with the like the the whatever it's called, like a comb it to the back and, and to the side sorta. Of. Yeah. And my mother at my sister's was like, are you getting a little bald spot? I'm like, no. I wanted to <laughs> shave all my hair off because I wanted to see where this bald spot was they're talking about. Right. I don't have a bald spot. It's just I have the way, like, the hair goes in the back. It sort of swirls, and it looks okay. thinner you, back there. You got the little cyclone going? <clears throat> kind of, yeah, in the, in the top and the back. But yeah. it's been like that forever. Right. And she tried to tell me that I was balding. I was like, if I think it would have started happening by now. Mm. I don't know. So I shaved it all off. Yeah. And I'm not. You 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 look like a like a like a hip hop rapist. You know that? A rapist. But then I kept the beard. So I, I, I kinda like the look though. The bald with the I was trying you know, to look, be like man, you. Stay stay out of my lane, man. This is this is what I do. <clears throat> you you have to have you have to have the salon looking flowy locks fade. Okay, you do that, mm. all right? With like the, the fade slash DA, you know, little flowy locks thing going. You do that, right? I'll right. do the bald with the the, the 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 chin strap. Let me do that. The chin strap. I didn't change anything about my beard. I just, yeah, I don't like I like my beard the same way every time. But it it makes it it like accentuates the beard when you have no hair on top of your head. Yeah, of course. That's what I'm saying. That's why you got to be nice with that with that straight razor game. You know what I mean? Get those nice uh, those nice lines, man. I and yeah, I'm sitting there talking about that, and, and, and my beard looks crazy right now. But it is what mine it is. probably looks kind of crazy too because I haven't touched it since that day. That was about yeah. two weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, oh. but you know, it is what it is. As long as you got the kit, like I have a kit here, you know, that I do all of that stuff. But I I have all my stuff. Is the Wall Five Star Series? So, you know the Andis stuff is good too, but you know that's you fancy. Nah, that's I had I had a regular Wall joint. I don't know. I just I I've had it for a long time, so I think that's it. I never really properly clean it or spray it with whatever they use yeah, at the barber with I it. Use, I use all of that. I spray my stuff. I keep it well lubed and all of that stuff like that. What you keep it lubed, Daddy? Yeah, you know what? Oh. Here, here's, here's, I thought that I was trying to have an hour-long adult conversation with you. And we almost got yeah, there. We... 59, 59 minutes and 20 seconds. We almost got there. All right. So this is what we need to talk about moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not going to do that anymore. We're not going to have adult conversations. <laughs> All right. See, our podcast might as well be a phone call. Right, right. We have, we have no structure. We float from topic to topic. I think in the year 2021, yes, we need to either hire, bring somebody on. When I say hire, I don't mean, I don't mean give them a single dollar. I mean appoint them a position to be a producer, and whoever it may be, we're gonna put out an open call right now. Yes, we need somebody that knows what the fuck we need to do, like because we've been almost doing this for a year, even though we've taken more weeks off. We haven't taken more off than we have, but it's 35 and there's 50, what, 52? 52 weeks. So, yeah, we t- we've so, taken two weeks off. <clears throat> we've taken, but understandably, we dealt with fucking COVID right in the middle of this. So we saw it on a hiatus there and then right. here and there. Like, we need to get our shit together. We need to figure out a format for doing this. I think that I need to go on or we need to go on YouTube uh-huh. and check out what our most what our most viewed episode is. Right. And then study what we did there. 
Mm-hmm. And I also think that we need to start bringing in guests every week. Right. People that are doing stuff that they want to promote. Right. And people that have access to um, video and audio on a somewhat professional level. I mean, the entire world is fucking Zooming everything now these days, so we could bring somebody in through Zoom. Right. And just do it that way, because I think that, like, all of the podcasts that I listen to, for the most part, uh, with the exception of <laughs> the new Joey Diaz podcast, because it's sort of, he moved to, he was in California, they stopped doing it the way they were doing, and now he sort of does it by himself. Occasionally, there'll be a Zoom guest. But we need somebody that's going to be, like, keeping us on track. We need a staff. That's what we need. We need a staff. Well, if we had one strong person that was able to fucking just, just like if I was on topic, and I know it sort of seems like we're putting things off on someone else, but we tried it this way for almost a year. So uh-huh. that didn't work. Well, <laughs> that fucking... here's the thing. Here's the thing. What we need <clears throat> is someone who is going to bring uh, that added structure to it. Because we try to talk about things. What we try to do is we try to talk about things and touch about touch on different topics. But we basically are just randomly freestyling up here. What we need to do is to <clears throat> corral the randomness and just right. get topical. And we need to bring in, you know, different people from now and, you know, every now and then. And talk to people, not for the whole podcast, but, you know, give people a little 20, 30 minutes and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Like interesting people. I could talk to somebody for a while if they're interesting. If we like what they're saying, then yeah. But, like, you know, when you listen to these podcasts that have guests, you kind of want to hear what the next thing they're going to be asked or or what they're going to say is. Right. Like, by the time people are this deep with us, we sort of have a storyline that goes and people know it. Like, it's like, all right, enough about us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the name of the new podcast. Enough about us. Enough about us. <laughs> Fucking I don't know. But that's what we, we need to we need to finally Well this is, this is what's gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen. In the weeks coming, it will be us fine tuning what we already have built. Okay? That's right. And, so and with that said, we're at uh one oh four hour. Three minutes. Yeah. 28, 29, and 30. As if anybody ever dealt with us before, they know we don't like to push it because technology has screwed us over many a time with this podcast. That's right. So with that being said, go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>